Hi everyone, as you might have noticed, I have snowed into the flying part of Battlefield 5 a little. More specifically, the dogfight part. This video will go through the principles of BFM and some basic concepts that are required to understand in order to be efficient and make conscious decisions. Before we start, I just want to throw out there that if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and even subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot with the YouTube thingy. What is BFM? BFM stands for Basic Fighter Maneuvers and it's tactical maneuvers formed by fighter aircraft to gain a positional advantage over the opponent in dogfighting. The more fine or nerdy word for dogfight would be air combat maneuvering or ACM, but for our purpose, dogfight is fine. Airplanes are affected by four forces. Thrust is what moves the aircraft forward. Drag, the rearward force that opposes thrust. Parasite drag is drag from the aircraft and increases at high airspeeds. Induced drag is a byproduct of lift and increases at high angles of attack. Weight pulls the aircraft down due to the gravity. It always acts in the same direction as gravity. Lift, it's the thing that keeps the aircraft flying and counters weight. It's always perpendicular to the wings while weight always is in the same direction as gravity. That is important to understand the geometry of flying and, in turn, BFM. When flying, there is something called load factor. It's the ratio of total lift to weight and it's measured in g-force, not the graphics card, gravity. When in level flight, LF equals 1g. The takeaway is that while in combat you mainly consider the direction of your lift vector as you often are at full thrust without major weight change. Turn performance includes turn rate and turn radius. If the turn rate increases or the turn radius decreases, the turn performance increase. There are three planes of motion when you are maneuvering, horizontal, vertical or oblique. Starting with horizontal plane, you basically increase your bank angle and pull back on the stick to compensate that lift decreases. This increases the angle of attack, which increases lift and load factor, and also improves your turn performance. In a more advanced game, increasing bank would eventually lead to stall, but since Battlefield 5 is quite arcade-ish, we don't have to mind about that. If we look at the vertical plane, Gravity doesn't directly affect the turn performance, and radial G is the same as the lift factor. However, it becomes interested when we are inverted, as gravity assists the turn performance. When we are upright, the exact opposite happens, and gravity reduces our turn performance. So improving turn performance will always be more energy efficient when inverted, due to gravity assist, also called God's G. Oblique is the definition for any plane outside pure, horizontal or vertical. But the gravity still affects you, so if you turn with or against gravity will decide your turn performance. There are four main factors that change during a fight. Range, aspect angle, heading cross angle, closure. These are the problems of dogfighting, which defenders create and attackers solve using BFM. Range is the distance between the two aircrafts, nothing more to it. Aspect angle is the position of the attacker of the defender's tail. Higher aspect angle creates higher closure. Lower aspect creates offensive advantage, meaning that it's easier to land shots. Heading crossing angle, HCA, may seem similar to aspect angle. It's a measure of how aligned your fuselages are. A higher HCA increases the closure, and the HCA equals the aspect angle when the attacker points at the defender. I have mentioned closure on a few occasions now, and that is how fast the range between the attacker and defender changes over time. Positive closure means that the range is decreasing, and negative closure means that the range is increasing. Pursuit curves are flight paths used when attacking to control range, aspect, HCA and closure to get into and maintain a position behind the bandit's 3-9 line with the ultimate goal of shooting it down. The three pursuit curve types, lead, pure and lag. This describes where nose are pointing. If in front of the defending aircraft, it's a lead pursuit. 
if on the defending aircraft it's a pure pursuit, and finally, if it's behind the defending aircraft it's a lag pursuit. But as dogfighting happens in three dimensions, you might find yourself on a different plane of motion, as described in the egg, and then the lift vector determines the curve. Lead pursuit allows us to increase our closure by having a higher aspect. The larger the lead, the higher the aspect and closure will be. This is usually used to reduce the range to get into position for a gun kill, but as an attacker you want to transition from lead pursuit to pure or lag pursuit before you reach the bandit in order to not risk overshooting. As a defender, if seeing a bandit in a close lead pursuit, you generally want to make break turn or do something else to try and increase the aspect and closure even further to ruin the shot. Pure pursuit has about the same effect as lead pursuit, but in a more controlled manner as the aspect and closure isn't as high. As the attacker you normally want to transition into pure pursuit when inside a bandit's turning circle, while as a defender it means that the attacker is trying to control the closure or going for a gunshot. In lag pursuit range increases or stay constant, but the aspect decreases and so does the closure. As an attacker this can prevent from overshooting a bandit, but it also lowers the pressure as it's not possible to hit gunshots. It's mainly used to create turning room to use later to get into a better position later. As the defender it means that for a moment you can't be killed by gun attacks. It's a good chance to recover energy, although the need for that isn't as great in Battlefield 5 as in more realistic games. As the defender, how do you know what kind of curve the bandit is on? Watching a bandit behind you, the profile of the bandit tells you what pursuit curve the bandit is flying. If you see the top of the bandit, that means that it's a lag pursuit. Bandits don't have any opportunity to go for a gunshot and for the moment you are safe. If you see the frontal profile of the bandit, that means that it's a pure pursuit. And if not already, the bandit is likely to go for a gunshot. Finally, if you see the belly of the bandit, that's a lead pursuit, meaning that the bandit is likely soon to be in position for a gunshot. You can also use the line of sight to determine your situation, specifically by how the bandit moves along your canopy. I just want to point out that in Battlefield 5 I find it rather hard to keep track of the bandit when in dogfight. Much comes down to the quite restricted angles of view and that there is no automatic tracker as in some other games. Most players are probably aware you can in first person look forward and zoom and also that you can free look. Then you can look forward and backward in third person. I'm yet to master this property but by combining free look and look up at the same button you can actually switch to first person look up when in dogfight giving you a better view of the situation while dogfighting. I did some google foo after coming up with the idea and found that the others had already come to the same conclusion. So, if the bandit moves aft on your canopy, your situation is more defensive and you are losing angles. This is bad. If however the bandit is moving forward on your canopy, your situation is more offensive and you are gaining angles. This is good. Finally, if stationary on canopy, your situation is unchanged. That is generally better than bad at least. That is all I'm going through in this video and as promised, it was all about the basics of BFM. In coming videos, the idea is to put this into practice and show how different maneuvers can help you in different situations. This is us learning together, which I certainly enjoy and I hope you do too. Cheers!